Hey everybody, I am here for the Fresh New Voice of YA excerpt vlog, and today I'm going to be reading from Struts and Friends by John Scavron. And um, he gave me a couple of scenes to choose from, but in the end he said, you know, like just but just pick whatever scene speaks to you. And at first I wasn't really thinking. I was just like, okay, well, you know, whatever. I'll just pick one of the ones that he already pointed out to me because. I'm usually not very good at picking out excerpts, and so, um, and I think at that point I hadn't actually read much of the book yet, or even started, who knows. So, but I ended up finishing the book, and then I was thinking about it, and it's like, well, you know, maybe, and so I just I kind of just thought about it, and I was like, well, maybe I should go ahead and read this scene, because it kind of speaks to me, it's, it's a very, um, scene that... I don't necessarily relate to, but it's just I relate to in the f in, in kind of um, at who the person is. That's how I relate to it. So, um, yeah. So, I just want to read it, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, this is part of, it's in the middle of chapter 4, it's on page 63. After knocking back a few beers and murdering each other a dozen times, we decided that the latest perfect dark, though good, was still no halo, so we switched over. There was a whole lot of trash talk floating through the air, mainly from Rick and Alexander, because as usual, TJ and I were getting our asses kicked. Rick tossed his controller aside, yelled, More beer for the victor! and stalked into the kitchen area. Rick's house was completely open downstairs, so there w wasn't really any separate rooms. His mom was an interior decorator, and their house always felt a little like a showroom. So where's Five? asked TJ. She said she'd stop by at some point, I said. But you never know with her, said Rick from the kitchen. Best thing to do is assume she isn't coming, then you might be pleasantly surprised. Don't you like her? said TJ. Fiver? asked Rick as he came back and handed beers around. She's awesome. She's just weird. How so? asked TJ. Boy, said Rick, nudging Alexander, you get a few into TJ and he can't stop talking about Fiverr. Alexander had started up a solo game of Halo, and he looked completely zoned into it, but he spoke in a way that sounded almost rehearsed. I noticed that too, Richard. What do you think it means? Well, young Alexander, some guys get stuck on a girl, you know. Hey, wait a minute, said TJ. Hmm, said Alexander. Richard, I'm not sure I know what you mean. Perhaps you could explain further. It's simple, Alexander, said Rick. Sometimes when a man sees a woman who is 80% like his ideal mate, his judgment becomes cloudy and his heart begins to pound. Wait, I said, you don't mean... Rick gave me a wicked grin. Oh yeah, TJ's got a big old crush on the fiber. Rick and Alexander thought this was hilarious for some reason. I guess I was supposed to think so too, because Rick kept looking over at me with this weird grin. TJ was blushing bright red now as he glared at Rick and Alexander. Why are you guys laughing? I mean, what's wrong with it? Nothing, said Rick, and then laughed again. I mean, said TJ, she's cool, right? And pretty hot? Yeah, sure, Rick shrugged. She's not my type or anything, but in her own uh, in her own funky way, she's smoking. TJ's face was still red, but I realized it was probably just as much anger as embarrassment. You're always saying that so-and-so isn't your type. Well, what is your type, then? Rick stopped laughing and looked suddenly serious in a way he rarely did. Well, he said carefully, first of all, my type is male. I don't think there was anything in the world that would have shocked TJ more. His jaw dropped. His eyes popped and he just stared like Rick had slapped him across the face with a dead fish. I guess I could relate. When Rick had told me the year before, I'd been surprised. After all, Rick wasn't anything like those goofy stereotypes in the movies and sitcoms. At first I admit it totally weirded me out. I kept wondering if I was supposed to treat him differently, or if I was offending him somehow. But that got old pretty quick. He was still just Rick. My best friend would just happen to think that men were better looking than chicks. I knew, and Alexander knew, but poor TJ had been totally in the dark. What? He tried. Why? Why am I gay? asked Rick, grinning at TJ's discomfort. Well, we don't really know. Some say it's genetic, other either inherited or mutation. Some say it's upbringing. No! said TJ, clearly struggling to keep his cool. I mean, why didn't you tell me before? Rick got serious again. Honestly, it's because before you started mooning over Gen 5, I wasn't sure which team you were playing for. What? TJ's eyes bugged. You thought I was gay? He looked so funny saying it that I had to bite my tongue to keep from laughing. Yeah, Rick shrugged. 
<laughs> I've discovered that when another gay guy finds out that you're gay, they start taking liberties with you. You thought I would take liberties? He said, and clearly he had no idea what Rick meant, but was imagining something really horrible. I was just being cautious, said Rick. Nothing personal. I'm not generally out, as they say. Wow, was all TJ could say. Rick looked carefully at Adam. Rick looked carefully at him, like he was trying to figure out what that wow meant. At last, he said, "Are we cool?" TJ nodded his head. "Yeah, for sure. I just I've never known a gay guy before." "Sure you have, Rick Rind. We've been friends since junior high." "Hey, speaking of," I said, "does Joe know you're gay?" "Um," said Rick. "I think that's right up there with never introducing him to your mom." "Gotcha," I said. But enough about me, said Rick, slugging down his beer. Let's get back to the much more interesting topic, TJ's helpless crush on, crush on Gen 5. He turned to Alexander, who was, well, who was still cutting a swath of destruction through Halo. Young Alexander, when did you first notice that our TJ was smitten? Well, Richard, said Alexander, still not looking up from his game. I suppose it was a few days ago, during his fascinating but somewhat awkward description of the blindness of love. Ah, Rick nodded. For me, it was the vacant, frightened expression on his face whenever she sat down at our table. Then he turned to me. And Samuel, what gave it away for you? Can we just drop this? I asked. Why? asked Rick. He still had that weird grin like he was up to something devious. Sometimes when you get a little drunk, I said, you get kind of mean like this and I don't think you realize it. Poor TJ looked like he wanted to crawl up and die. He probably would have taken off for home right then and there, except it would have been hard to explain to his parents why he was coming home at midnight stinking of beer. So don't be an asshole. TJ said enough. TJ? Rick asked, and the grin turned downright evil. Who says I was picking on TJ? What? I started, but then I finally got it. Are you? I began. I just couldn't say it, though. I knew what he was suggesting, but it was just too weird to think about. I'm just wondering, said Rick, how it feels to have some competition. No, I said and shook my head. I do not have a crush on the fiber. Rick shrugged. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But she has always had a thing for you. No, fuck this, I said. You're just trying to get me worked up. Alex, said Rick, back me up here. Eyeballs still glued to the game. Alexander started chanting, She wants to jump your bones. rat a tat tat went the game. She wants to clean your pipes. Foosh went the game. She wants to ride your baloney pony. Kaboom went the game. She... Thanks, Alex, said Rick. We get the idea. I was so mad. I felt like breaking something. Maybe Rick's face. I couldn't think clearly and only said something dumb like, You should have totally lost it. But I felt more than just anger. There was another emotion. Like a chill or dizziness. Kind of like fear. Piper is like, She's my friend. My buddy. Your what buddy? Said Rick. I turned to DJ. TJ. Maybe just because I wasn't sure how much longer I could hold off punching Rick. I'm sorry, TJ. You know Rick's just being a drunk shit. But TJ was just kind of looking at me weirdly. Rick continued, You think Alex and I are making it up? So then, you don't mind if TJ asks her out, right? I looked back and forth between Rick and TJ. In the background, Alexander was still blasting away bad guys. I wanted to say, Yeah, sure, TJ, go ahead and ask Gen 5 out, all cool and nonchalant. I hope you score. But I couldn't say it. It stuck in my throat and, I wouldn't, and it wouldn't come out, and I really felt like if I tried to force it, I would actually start crying or throw up or something. So we stood there in silence, just staring at each other like gunfighters, waiting for the other one to make the first move, like that old Eastwood movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. I didn't know who was who, but I sure felt like we were in a desert. Then the front door burst open. It was Gen 5. Where's the beer? She screamed. We all stared at her. Even Alexander paused his game and turned around to look at her. She raised an eyebrow at us. Wow, who died? Hey, Fiverr, said Rick calmly. Beer's in the fridge. Thanks, she said. Still watching us over her shoulder, she walked into the kitchen. So, she said, did I miss something? You sure did, said Rick. He seemed to have recovered from the shock already. He sprawled back onto the couch with his beer. I was just telling TJ that I'm a big homo. Ah, Gen 5 nodded. She gave TJ a sympathetic look. Disappointing, isn't it? I always thought gay men were supposed to be smart and funny. She stood at the fridge and took a long chug on her beer. And attractive, she added. You knew too? asked TJ. Gen 5 rolled her eyes. Please, I knew before he did. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this, um excerpt vlog and let me check time really quickly oh wow i actually have more time than i did the first time i did it but not too much um so i just wanted to clear uh talk about gen 5 is samuel's best friend and that they they've known each other i think since like childhood and and they've been best friends for a while so 
this woman to let you know. And the reason she's called Gen 5 is because there are four other Jennifers in her class and they got all the nicknames, and so she just decided to just call herself Gen 5. And then um, Joe is the lead singer of their band, who is very tall and mean and scary, and um, yeah, so they're scared of him, so <laughs> that's why. Um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this, and be sure to check out Christina Springer's interview yesterday, and I will see you guys in the, the next uh, excerpt vlog with The Espressologist by Christina Springer. Okay, bye.